Hey guys, welcome to the definitive Speedster tier list. Even though I said I was done with Speedsters, this is truly the last stage because we're not just measuring if a Speedster lost to bad writing. We're measuring how badly a Speedster lost to bad writing. And remember, consistency is objective. So first, CW Flash. One of the dumbest characters ever written. I'm sure most of you guys are already familiar with him, which is why I'm gonna place him first so you guys can use him as a benchmark on this speedster spectrum. Basically, CW Flash is able to freeze time, and on top of that, he has all these abilities that just make it insufferable every time this dude clowns himself in the dumbest ways. So he's gonna go in F tier. Let's get started now. Every time I've talked about Red Rush, most people in the comment section would collectively agree that Red Rush is a well-written speedster. And listen, this is just speculation, but I also really think that most people just can't handle criticism with what they like. Like I said, anyone can talk shit about CW Flash, but when it's invincible, people are like, hmm, yeah, wait, wait, what you say? I have gotten a lot of dumbass counters, but to be fair, my stance on Red Rush is spread across three videos, and I obviously don't expect someone to sit down and watch three of my videos. So to prove why Red Rush is a bad speedster, I'm gonna quickly go over everything. So the first thing with Red Rush is him zipping back and forth, relocating people. Nothing really important here other than, yeah, this is pretty fast. So in the next scene, he's talking to his girlfriend and then he instantly suits up and does this shit. What is this? Yeah, yeah. Think about not only how fast it would have to be, but how fast it would have to perceive things to instantly tie a dude up with wires on a pole. But guess what? Comment section morons are way more stubborn than that. So then he says that a brief conversation is like hours to him, shout out to the Invincible writers, and then we get to the fight scene. Red Rush saves Immortal and then a second later he saves Ball Weapon Girl by blocking Omni-Man's punch. The punch also makes a shockwave on landing. Very fucking interesting. So then Red Rush saves Fish Guy, showing that he's way faster than Omni-Man to be able to evade attacks that aren't even directed at him. And then Red Rush starts attacking Omni-Man. Remember that this is a guy who can instantly tie a dude up on a pole. So from his perspective, he would be running up to Omni-Man and staring at him for minutes. So after doing this twice, Omni-Man then pulls a 900 IQ Fortnite play by looking the other way and then catching Red Rush's punch without even looking. Red Rush obviously having the perception to tie a dude up on a pull instantly, just decides to let Omni-Man slowly lift up his hand and grab his arm. So then Omni-Man lets go of Red Rush's hand and from Red Rush's perception slowly puts his hand on each side of Red Rush's face. Red Rush. Having the perception to be able to literally walk away while this is happening, decides to stay and admire Omni-Man's face. There's nothing as beautiful as true love, guys. And then Omni-Man is somehow able to generate enough force from this position to crush Red Rush's head, even though a full force punch from 10 seconds ago didn't even affect him. And Red Rush, being so sexually attracted to Omni-Man, decides to slap him repeatedly instead of kicking away from this fake-ass, power-level ass. What the fuck even is that? So yeah, now that I've provided the literally just Red Rush scenes how a logical person would see them, it's time to address some dumbass arguments that people keep using. So the first defense is Omni-Man baited him, and, and you would think that there's more, but that's it. They basically just explain what happens, and I, I agree. It's just like this scene where the Flash was getting predictable and Captain Cold noticed it, so he froze the fire hydrant and the Flash ran into it. Another argument is, yeah, the reason Red Rush stopped every time he punched was because he didn't want to break his hand on Omni-Man's face. And I just want to let you guys know that these are real comments. Red Rush literally blocked Omni-Man's punch, creating a shock wave, and he didn't even react. And even if he knew he would break his hand punching, why the fuck is he attacking him then? Use a weapon, you stupid fuck. And even if he's dumb enough to punch him at normal speed, have you ever punched a solid object? <laughs> and this one I think is pretty funny. Isn't it possible that Red Rush is saying that to cover up for being a shitty boyfriend? And no, because apparently this scene is a setup for this scene where it's like, Oh my god, guys. It's so disturbing how Red Rush is dying in slow motion. <sighs> And I'm just going insane, because if he experienced literally dying in slow motion, then he also experienced Omni-Man slowly lifting up his fucking hand in slow motion. But the funny part about this argument is that you actually assume the Invincible writers have enough skill to write nuance like that. How could the greatest you not be enough? Thank you. Bruh. Now I know Madvocate in his video praising Red Rush was like, Oh well that's two out of three wins, so that's pretty good. 
But honestly, no, because every shitty writer is going to show off crazy speedster powers when the plot allows them to. CW Flash sometimes also dunks on his enemies. It's in how they make the speedster lose that shows whether or not they understand speedster powers. Now, am I saying that it's impossible that Omni-Man beats Red Rush? No, of course not. But the way Red Rush loses directly contradicts the previous scenes. So Red Rush goes in F tier. Now, the last defense I want to bring up is what most people come up with to justify Red Rush. Omni-Man is a speedster! And like, yeah, nice job digging your own hole, you fucking moron. Omni-Man is way more important to the show than Red Rush. And in saying that Omni-Man is a speedster, they then extend that to every single opponent Omni-Man has gone up against. That includes Immortal, these robots, the dragon, and the fucking guardians of the globe, apparently. Flying super fast does not give you speed react. But there is one moment where Omni-Man kills this dude and you clearly see the super speed effect that is not present in any of these other fights. And if you're gonna argue that every fight happens in slow motion, helicopters don't move at super speed, you fucking idiot. And these fights are literally broadcasted in real time to normal ass people. How stupid can you be? Both Omni-Man and Mark go in F- tier because they are speedsters that neglect their speed. Now in my original video, I gave A-Train a pass. There's two instances where he loses and that includes the heart problems which I not only found to be engaging for the character, but also the action scenes. And then when he gets snuck up on, that is an actual way to beat a speedster. But he's also not perfect. He definitely has perception judging from when he instantly got into this car or instantly injected himself with needles. But then there's this part where Kimiko grabs his face and he just doesn't see it coming. And then of course you have the whole plot where A-Train is afraid of Homelander. The truth is that if Huey can impact Homelander, yeah, A-Train could definitely do way more. I would argue that A-Train could probably generate more power than Soldier Boy. However, Homelander wouldn't die and there's always the great risk of Homelander snapping. A-Train can't fly and he has loved ones. So guys, I'm actually feeling pretty good about A-Train. I don't think it's a fair criticism for me to say, oh, well, they're probably going to mess him up later, even if I do kind of feel like that. But really, the only problem is the Kimiko scene, which is honestly pretty embarrassing, but not nearly as bad as anything Red Rush or The Flash do. So A-Train is going straight to B-tier. But wait, guys, Homelander is a speedster. Now, here's my thought process. Just like I don't think it's fair for a director to say something in an interview and then use that to justify the movie, I don't think a director can just say, oh yeah, that's canon, only one episode though. But again, you idiots are digging your own grave again. How many moments in this show does Homelander straight up not have speed react? But then you also have people saying, well, if Homelander's fighting Soldier Boy, then Soldier Boy also has to have super speed. They're fighting in super speed. And oh wow, Starlight and a normal human with no powers are then talking at super speed. And then they also just ignore Homelander getting a car thrown on top of him. Like why? Why do you idiots bring up such stupid points for no reason? I actually want to address that people get mad at me for quote unquote disrespecting my viewers. First of all, when did it become disrespectful to insult somebody's intelligence? I don't know you as a person. Your intelligence isn't relevant to who you are as a person. Put yourself in my shoes. What are the possibilities for why someone would post a comment like this? A. The man just really likes the boys and this is his way of defending it. That would make him an insecure validation seeking moron. B. This guy genuinely thinks Soldier Boy has super speed. That means he lacks basic logic and that makes him a moron. C. This guy half recalls Soldier Boy having super speed, but he's gonna post a comment like he's sure about it. That would make him a fucking idiot. Now when I call you an idiot, I'm also not saying that you're eternally an idiot. That's the thing about your brain. It can grow. You can gain basic logic. And I hope you do. But so many people on the internet have such an ego that I would rather just give them a wake-up call. Homelander as a speedster goes in F- minus tier. And I recognize that I'm spending too much time on these dudes, so I'll stop bringing up arguments, and I hope you guys trust me to give correct and honest ratings. Just remember what Franco said. It's okay to enjoy shit writing. Ah! Here we freaking go with my man, the GOAT. I cannot think of any mistake they made with this dude. The only half argument I can think of is like this part where he maybe could have used super speed to get out of there. But as we learned five seconds later, he truly believed that Megamind deserved an explanation. And this ice cube was already a dead giveaway. So yeah, the perfect example of a god being a god. S tier, so easily. Dash! Here's the thing about Dash. 
I 100%, 1000% stand by the fact that this is how most speedsters should be written. But, he wasn't perfect. A lot of people brought up this thumbtack scene. And yeah, that's actually disgusting. It's a shame because afterwards he's so consistently like 200 miles per hour, but when I was thinking about this scene, Dash obviously has a level of perception because 200 miles per hour is still pretty fast. But ultimately, Dash is still held back by these comedy moments, which aren't that straight up broken as you'll see later, but he still is a very good speedster. A 100 mile Dash has to be the best speedster scene of all time. And don't even argue, you know it's true. So Dash goes in B tier, respect. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Scroll from Over the Hedge is one of the best speedsters ever. In the beginning, he's just kind of like a Dash type guy. He's really fast, but he's also a squirrel, so he's pretty weak. But then they give him cocaine and he freezes time. But he doesn't just freeze time and get caught in a weird way. He single-handedly ends the movie. That's how you do a speedster. Now he does actually get caught and he does make some dumb decisions, but the movie almost goes out of its way to show us how dumb this dude is. Like it's one thing when a grown ass man acts like a moron, but this is a dumb ass pea brain squirrel. I was honestly thinking of putting him in A tier because you could make the argument that the dumbness is contrived to the movie's favor, but honestly, I buy it. So I'm gonna put him in S tier. Yeah, DreamWorks is just the goat when it comes to speedsters. X-Men Quicksilver. One of the fastest time in a bottle scenes ever. It's just self-explanatory, like look at this. But obviously he loses to some of the worst writing ever. Just so you guys know, Apocalypse has to hibernate and mutate into someone else's body to gain powers. So he doesn't have super speed, but he's able to react in a fraction of a nanosecond judging from the previous scene. And he's able to perceive Quicksilver in slow fucking motion. And then he just instantly summons an earth trap with fucking molecular precision. But just in case you're a delusional fuck, Quicksilver then just decides to stop using super speed and gets his leg broken. F tier. And holy shit guys, I didn't even realize that Quicksilver was in another X-Men movie. Like what the fuck is this? Oh fuck. And by the way, Apocalypse, F minus tier. Worst speedster of all time. MCU Quicksilver, the owner of the worst film editing ever. Oh shit, okay. What, what? Where the fuck did Quicksilver go? How the fuck, where the, what the fuck is Quicksilver doing right now? He's a speedster. Okay, the door's up there, cool. What the fuck? His death, where apparently he pushes Hawkeye. For him to die by being at the exact distance with the exact amount of energy to hit the bullets and barely save Hawkeye, this has to be the luckiest kill in Ultron's career. But honestly, most of the time in this movie, I don't know what Quicksilver is doing. He kind of just appears, disappears, and then appears again when the scene really needs him to. So yeah, it's not just about how you die, it's also about how you're written, and Quicksilver is just mentally slow, like I don't even know what to tell you. D tier. Girl from Eternals is really fast, but is never shown to have time in a bottle moments. But the way she seamlessly zooms through a city shows that she has to have some sort of enhanced perception. But her speed drastically changes within scenes. Like this Superman fight scene, she's just clowning on them, but then here she's just like slow, what, like what? She's honestly just inconsistently written, so D tier. Not offensive, but still pretty bad. So this speedster named Agent Shield can essentially freeze time, but her quote unquote limitation is that she returns to where she was once she's done. How long until she's reverted? Don't ask that question. I genuinely don't see how reverting back is a limitation other than just like traveling, but who the fuck messes up traveling? Nobody. So okay, freeze time and knock them all out. Oh, you're just gonna grab their guns and put them in a pile? Okay, you're a fucking idiot. What, why, why the fuck are you not using your super speed? What are you doing? Oh, I, I, you just got your fucking arms chopped off while in super speed. Bro, get the fuck out. A tier. Roadrunner and Speedy Gonzalez, it's finally time for their day in the sun. It kind of reminds me of this show that I used to watch when I was little, Oscar. I don't know if you guys ever watched it, but I did. Sonic is instantly shown to be one of the fastest speedsters ever, being able to freeze time and use super speed while time is frozen. 
And in the second movie, you can tell that they let go of that to make a more tangible story where Sonic is just a Dash type guy. But you cannot ignore the first movie. It's probably a situation where they were coming up with ideas for Sonic 2 and they were like, Okay, we're gonna have Sonic and Knuckles fight and... And uh... WHY THE FUCK DID YOU LET HIM FREEZE TIME, KYLE? F tier. Ben 10, ugliest show I've ever watched. He has an alien transformation and he's insane. He can slow down time, relocate people, punch super fast, he can make tornadoes, and then he does this. And this. D tier. DCEU Flash, which I'm only gonna be looking at Zack Snyder's version. He makes some pretty stupid decisions like in this scene where he just runs at Superman. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dumbass? You're just gonna run at Superman? He also gets shot, which people have said it's like a fan situation, but Barry is literally shown to slow down time when he moves fast, so he should have easily been able to dodge it. And it's kind of important since this mistake literally ends the world. So I do honestly have to put him in D tier. Barry is inexperienced, but at the same time, he's literally not inexperienced, like he clearly knows what he's capable of. Superman is a guy who you guys have clowned me twice on. The first time you guys said that he didn't know there was kryptonite in the bomb, and the second time you guys said that Superman doesn't even know what kryptonite is. But he still gets grabbed at normal speed against Doomsday, which Doomsday does not use super speed since the fog and fire are not slowed down. And I find it pretty fucking contrived how Superman regains his powers but conveniently not speed react. They also forgot Superman has x-ray vision. Wonder Woman does not have super speed, so why the fuck are you not using super speed right now? So yeah, I'm gonna say D tier for Superman. Flash movie Flash is definitely different from Snyder Flash because the whole rules are different, but yeah, the speedster is also pretty bad. The movie actually introduces like an energy mechanic that goes nowhere. Barry in this scene just loses speed react for literally no reason. And then he just does nothing in this scene. Like I get that young Barry is inexperienced, but he's not a fucking idiot. He's a smart kid and there's no way he wouldn't be able to do anything. You don't even have to know how to fight if you can just freeze time and shove sticks up people's asses. Also, the timeline rule set in this movie is just illogical. Like, why does changing the past also change what came before it? And the final battle where they try everything but it's a canon event? Yeah, that's some pretty fucking lazy writing, bro. And then you have the worst time in a bottle scene I think I've ever seen. Like, I don't even know what to say about it. It just blows my mind. D tier for the criminal. F tier. One Punch Man! Everyone in the comments, I couldn't even tell if they were genuinely offended that I've never watched this show, but now I did. And while the premise was promising, the dialogue was some of the most basic $3 dialogue I have ever seen. But the difference between this show and something like Invincible or Spider-Man PS4 is that it didn't take itself that seriously. But then also there's a lot of filler and not even like episode to episode, but like there's so many scenes that could have been cut down or just like cut entirely. And honestly, the concepts they explore are just the most basic shit you could think of. But even though these are less skilled writers, they still have brains. And One Punch Man is S tier. So that is such a good way to end this. Oh my God. You fucking Chuck. Fuck Chuck is pretty fine. He freezes time, but he also freezes himself on multiple occasions when he shouldn't have. But it's nothing that offensive, so I'm gonna put him in C tier. And wait, they made a second movie? No, 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 they didn't. No, 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 no. Alright, so fucking, we have Dragon Ball Z, and I think this guy is a speedster. Ah, uh, stop, man. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Guys, there are a good amount of speedsters that I straight up just said no to. I know a lot of you guys ask me about specific speedsters, but I'm telling you guys, it's just basic logic. If you want to know if a speedster is consistent, just think about it and be honest with yourself. Or don't, I don't really care. I remember I said that the last speedster video would be my last, and the reason why was because I truly didn't find consistent writing impressive. And that was the entire point of the video. So here's the tier list, soak it in. We hit 10,000 subscribers recently, so this is my way of repaying you guys. I love you, and thank you so much.